That's right, Ben. Oh, sure. Haven't seen you in a couple of years. Yeah, about that. Ben, this is Henry Trask, with top wrangler. Henry, Ben Cartwright. Trask? Heard about you, Cartwright. I understand you're a pretty big man in these parts. A lot bigger than you know, Henry. Big enough to have the army calling on him when they need horses? <laughs> Word sure gets around in these parts. Is that what brought you into town from the hills? Well, uh, unless you figure you got a monopoly. Oh, Frank, you know better than that. Army buys good horses wherever we can find them. And I've got some good ones. Oh, uh, I hear the brass is coming in on the noon stage. Is that right? You sure hear correctly, Frank. Yes, Major Dawson's coming in on the noon stage. He'll be staying with me if you want to see him. <laughs> oh, Ben, you don't miss a trick, do you? Oh, here she comes now, right on time. Ah! <laughs> Major, good to see you. Good to see you, Ben. It's my daughter, Dana. I wrote you she'd be coming with me. Well, it's a pleasure to see you. I hope your stay with us is very pleasant. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm looking forward to it. I'm Frank Cole, Major. I understand that you're here to buy some horses. I got some to sell. Well, Mr. Cole, I'm running rather a tight schedule. I hadn't planned on making two stops. But perhaps next trip. I doubt that Ben wants to hog all the business. I don't reckon he'd mind if I brought my string out to his place to show you. I don't mind, Major. Of course not. Well, fine. I'll, I'll be looking at a stock in the morning. I'll be there. Better get along. Hopsing is holding lunch. I'm looking for you. I want my back pay. I earned it. I gave you orders to help Billings and Evers with the Ramuda. I told you I was quitting. I told you last night, but you didn't listen. Trask, he likes pretty things. Give him a $20 gold piece. Pick it up, Trask. Pick it up! All right, you wanted your pay, you got it. Don't come weaseling back to me when you run out. There's no place in my outfit for a man who won't stand up and fight for his rights. of a man, is he?
Hop Singh, that was an excellent breakfast. My mess sergeant could take a few lessons from you. And so could I. That's nice of you to say that. Sometimes we take Hop Singh's cooking talents for granted. You like breakfast? You wait until you eat dinner. Mm. <laughs> mm. He makes good coffee. Morning, Mr. Dawson. Major? Oh, I got all them horses round up. You want to show the Major they're down to South Corral, and I got the Surrey all ready to go. Oh, good. Thank you, Oss. Major, shall we have a look at those horses? That's what I'm here for. The sooner the better, Ben. I'd like to go, too, if I may. Sure, come along. Traveling with me, she's become quite an expert. Oh, she has, has she? Miss Dawson, have you also become as expert at bargaining as your father is? <laughs> he don't mean that, Miss Dawson. He's just Josh. Uh, ain't nothing he likes better than a good horse. <laughs> Let's go. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright, could I talk to you a minute? Yes. You probably don't remember me, Mr. Cartwright. You saw me working horses once, two years ago. Yes, I remember. You did a good job. I've seen you since then, though. I saw you yesterday in Virginia City, didn't I? I'm sorry I bothered you, sir. Wait a minute, now. You haven't told me what you wanted. You saw me in town yesterday. Huh? And you saw me eating crow. Don't rightly figure you'd be hiring a man that backs down like I did. Well, usually a man backs down as a reason for it. You saw it like it was, sir. I'm a bit short-handed, my... Most of my men are off on a cattle drive with my youngest son. I could give you a trial. Mr. Cartwright, how about yesterday? Young fellow, I'm just interested in the way you handle horses. Now, you want a job, you get down to the South Corral. Yes, sir. Delicate? I doubt if we'd hold up a long patrol. Yeah, well, you, uh, you may be right, Major. I'll, uh, I'll see that he's sent back to the herd. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Ben. There's uh, no use rushing things. Uh, I might consider him, if the price is right. Well, Major, you know, I've, uh, I've always considered you a very good judge of horse flesh, and uh, you sure know what you want. No, sir, I'd hate to see a sensitive horse like this overworked. I'll, uh, I'll see that he's withdrawn. I'll take him. Well, Major, I just might sell him to you, if the price is right. Oh. This new hand over here. Yeah? Think he can handle that sorrel? Yeah, I think so. What's his name? Mark. Mark? Yes, sir. That sorrel is new to the saddle. He's got a mind of his own. Watch him. I can handle him, sir. I thought you might like him, Major. You know, I sort of had my doubts about that young man, but he's good. Yeah. Maybe it's just because the sorrel isn't giving him any trouble. The way he's handling that horse, ma'am. Seemed to me like he could face up to trouble. Didn't face up to trouble yesterday. Good work, Mark. Cut him in with the rest. Major, we've got two fellas bringing another string from the river range. We can show those after lunch. 
You keep driving the same bargain, you'll bankrupt the army. <laughs> Major, don't worry. Paul will take that uniform off of you before you get back to San Francisco. He might get some of them brass buttons, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's Frank Cole with his string horses. Let's see that one. Frank, I know Major Dawson here. Major, I can't entertain you to fine ranch like Ben's, but my stock's just as good. I'd say they're drawn a little fine. Well, we've driven them down from the mountains. Had to push them a little hard to get them here. A little grain, they'll fill out. I'll start working them for you. No, Mr. Cole. We'd both be wasting our time. They're not up to my standards. I kind of thought that's the way things might be. Nobody gets army business but you. That right, Ben? Now, Frank, I know you've had a rough time driving these horses down so the Major could see them. I'll overlook that remark. Major? What about that black horse? Looks pretty good. Ben's right. I'd like to see him work. Well, we, uh, we only caught him a little while ago. He, he's not exactly full broke yet. That's all right. I'll consider that when I watch him work. All right, Trask, you heard the man. Golly, slap a saddle on this black horse. Hurry it up. What's he doing here? He's here because I hired him. Why? Does it trouble you, him being here? No, no skin off my teeth. He's ready, Frank. All right. Ooh, now. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, now. Ooh. 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 Frank, this horse isn't ready, and you know it. All I know is you don't work for me no more. <laughs> Again, I'll break you in two. All right, that'll be enough. Nobody uses a whip on an animal around here. That ain't the way I see it. I don't care how you see it. Don't use a whip on an animal on the Ponderosa. You still interested in that stallion, Major? Not the way he is now. Well, suppose he was saddle broke. Then the army paid top dollar for him. But from the looks of him, you won't have time before I leave. You just let me worry about that. Let's go. His answer for everything. Man or animal, if it, if it don't knuckle under to him, he beats it until it does.
Oh, good evening. Good evening. Full moon tonight. Yes. Oh, it's so quiet. It's so nice to come out on a night like this and think back on the day. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be intruding on your thoughts this way. Night. As a matter of fact, Mr. Cartwright, I was thinking about you. Oh? Huh? And the young man you hired today. I was wondering why you hired him, knowing he was a coward. Well, I, I don't know he's a coward. But didn't you see him refuse to fight for what was rightfully his? Miss Dawson, I, uh, I hope you don't mind me asking you this, but why does it trouble you so much that I've hired this young fellow? Because I know him. You know him? Well, someone like him. Someone I've been trying to blot out of my memory. He, he looked like Mark. And he was a coward like he is. An army officer. Who in the middle of battle. Ran and... Killing himself and six of his men. And that coward was my husband. Now, do you understand, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, yes, I do understand. Miss Dawson, there's something else that I think you might try to understand. And that is that in every man, there's uh, some cowardice. And every man there's some bravery, too. <laughs> you know, when I was a little fellow, someone gave me a little dog, or a mutt, a cute little fellow. And he looked funny, because one side of him, the other side was all black, the other side was all white. And if you looked at him from one side, you'd say, oh, there goes Ben's black dog. And if you looked at him from the other side, you'd say, oh, there goes Ben's white dog. You know what? Inside, he was just plain dog. I don't believe you ever really had a dog like that. Don't you? But thanks for trying. But nothing you can say can make me change my mind about that man. Good night. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. Fine. I just noticed a lantern burning out there in the barn from my bedroom window. I thought I'd go out and check it. Oh, yeah, some one of the hands must have left it. See you in the morning. Good night, Paul. Up to, buddy. Oh, howdy, Hoss. You're supposed to be in a bunkhouse for this time of night. I guess I should have asked, but look at here. I'll be dead for it. Found him in a varmint trap out by the corral. Hey, you cute little fucker. It's got a busted leg, but I sort of fixed it up. <clears throat> Rascal bit me. I should have warned you. He's he's wild. How come he don't bite you? Well, folks say I got sort of a way with animals. Yeah, I noticed that today when you was riding that big sorrel. You gonna be all right? Sure. He's good as new in a week. Here you go, fella. Well, I've, I've seen some regular professional doctors that didn't have a touch with animals like you got. It's sort of been my dream, Hoss. Be a veterinarian. At school and takes a powerful lot of money. Sure can't save much on what you make chasing wild horses in the hill country. No. Let me ask something, Mark. How come a young fellow like you, with as much compassion and love for the animals you've got, 
How come you to get tangled up with a fellow like Frank Cole, anyhow? I thought you knew. Thinking on it, I guess there's no reason why you should have. Frank wouldn't have told you. Being ashamed of me like he is. Ashamed of you? For what? For not beating a scared horse? A lot more than that, horse. Well, for not living up to what he thinks I ought to be. Hard like he is. He's my brother, horse. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. I reckon we ain't never been properly introduced. No, we haven't. I'm Mark Cole. Cole? Isn't that the name of the man that owns the black horse? Yes, ma'am. He's my brother. We ain't much alike. Yes, I noticed that. I thought Hop Singh might have some scraps for this little fella. Oh, oh, easy boy. He's darling, a pet raccoon. Always oh, been hurt. Easy, ma'am. He's wild. Oh, nonsense. You're soft and gentle, ma'am. Animals know these things. Yes, they do. <laughs> he looked like Chinese Lop of Baron. <laughs> Well, I thought you might have some food for him. If it's all right with Mr. Cartwright. No need as Mr. Cartwright. Hop Singh in charge of food department. Besides, Mr. Cartwright not here. He and Major Dawson out looking at more horses. <laughs> you come with me. We fix fine meal for a little bandit. <laughs> come. <laughs> Take these horses, will you? Thank you. Percherons for everything you claim, Ben. <laughs> Excellent for army draft horses. Good. Well, that's about it then, Major. Twenty-six saddle horses, four unbroken yearlings, two foals, and six percherons. That brings a total to. I know what the total is. And Hoss, you were wrong. He's not letting me keep my buttons. <laughs> well, as soon as little Joe gets back, we'll drive the horses to Port Baxter for you. Oh, well, Dawson, let me ask you, what happened to your thumb? Oh, uh, Paul, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. That stallion you're interested in, Major, I'll have him ready to work soon, real soon. I'm afraid there won't be time, Mr. Cole. My daughter and I are leaving on the noon stage tomorrow. I said real soon, like uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, wait a minute, Cole. It's impossible. You can't gentle a horse like that overnight. My business is with the Major. Look, if you're ready, I tell you. I've got my methods. Yes, I saw your methods yesterday, Mr. Cole. I don't buy animals with whip marks on them. Then we're in agreement. There won't be a mark on him. In the morning. Well, if you'll join me, Ben, I'll uh, draw up your contract and pay warrant. Brother, yours is sure been on selling that horse, ain't he, Mark? Business ain't been too good. Yeah. Well, he's sure got his work cut out for him if he's figuring on taming that horse by morning. Tame him? Tear the heart right out of him. Crush and twist his spirit till there ain't nothing left. He'll never tame that stallion. He's run free too long. He'll die first. I know. I've worked him. He's just getting to know me. Well, Mark, there's just some things a fellow can't do nothing about. This sorrel's still a mite skittish, Hoss. It might be wise if I gave him some more saddle time. Whatever you like. But it's getting kind of late. See you.
How's he doing there? The way I got him fixed, he can't do anything but stand there and quiver. Yeah, but he's not like the others you've been working on. He's, he's sort of, I don't know, he's different. Maybe I ought to give him some water. He gets nothing. He's learning his lesson the hard way, but he asked for it. Now, I told that army brass he'd be ready in the morning, and he'll be ready. A rough way. Check it out. Oh, Frank. <clears throat> Henry. That's nothing. up so he couldn't rest. No water, no food. But mainly, well, he just seems to have lost the will to live. And after having almost killed the animal, your brother brings him back to you to save, is that it? Not quite, ma'am. Frank don't know nothing about it. I stole him. That's a blanket over there. Hand it to me. I think I should have stolen them, huh? Well, that's not for me to judge. Maybe you did right if that's the only way to save him. I ain't sure I can save him. A horse like this is proud, man. Proud he was born with. And run with till my brother caught him. Now, Frank's real good at squeezing pride like that. Only this time he went too far. You and your brother, you're not much alike, are you? The way you said that... Sounds like you don't see much good in either of us. Maybe it's because I don't see the good in being too hard or too soft. Oh, I think you gentled that word a mite, ma'am. I think you meant coward. Well, you said it. I didn't. But I don't think it's fair of you to bring the horse here where it's likely to cause trouble for Mr. Cartwright. I had no other place to bring him. As for Mr. Cartwright, I'm going to tell him now. No need, Mark. That's your brother's horse. Oh, 
trussed up. No food, no water. Broke his spirit. Easy. Frank was right, wasn't he? You don't need a whip to break a horse fast. It's just plain brutal. Well, Frank, don't look at it that way, Mr. Cartwright. He's rough and brutal, I'll not argue that. But it's the only thing he knows. He feels he's got to be that way to survive. If he's your brother, you can depend on him any way you want to, but there's no defense against treating an animal this way. I hate it as much as you do. Well, can we save him? I'd like to try. But I'll have to keep him here, if you'll allow it. I said we, didn't I? Get out of the way, Ben. Look, I said get out of the way. I know he's in there and I intend to have him. What are you talking about, Frank? You intend to have who? What? If you want me, I'll go. But the horse stays here. You're letting this little horse thief tell you what to do, Cartwright? If you're asking me if I'm agreeing with him, yes. You move that horse out of there, it's as good as murdering him. You've already come close enough to that. He's my property, and I'll decide what to do with him. Now, if you lead him out here, I'll forget what you did. Chalk it up to the, the weakness in you. No. A man's got a right to take what's his own, especially when it's been stolen. Now, Frank, Mark here's not denying the horse belongs to you. He's yours. I think what he's asking for is a little more time to bring him around if he can. You're stalling, Ben. The horse ain't that bad off. I want him, and I want him now. I'll buy the horse. What do you want for him? You got him crawling, Frank. What's your price? Nobody buys me off, Ben. He's not for sale anymore. Too much talk. No! No! Now, we'll do this legal. Right down the line, legal. There are laws against them that steals horses, and there's laws against them that harbor horse thieves. Maybe there ought to be laws against them that torture horses, too. That's just an opinion. Your opinion, Cartwright. That's right. Well, I'll be back in the morning with law that ain't just opinion. <laughs> tried with you, boy. I tried to put iron in your backbone, but you're soft, clean through. Yeah. Now I wash my hands of you. feet by morning. The Cartwright, do we have to get him back to my brother? He still needs a lot of care. Well, I... I don't think we have much choice in the matter, Mark. Law's on his side. Maybe he's just bluffing, Paul. Maybe he won't be back. He'll be back. Well, morning's still a long way off. Let's get some sleep. I'll stay here just in case. If you need any help, you know where to find us. Thank you. Bye. I was just bringing you some coffee, Hoss. Well, that was a nice thought, Miss Dawson. Thank you anyhow. I'm going to go to bed, I think. <laughs> yeah, oh, the horse is going to be all right. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, Ben, I think uh, Mark might like some of that coffee. He's, uh, he's staying in the barn. 
Yeah, it was Mark who brought that horse around. He, he's worked terribly hard. I'd sure like to drive into town myself. I'm expecting those visitors, as you know. Yes, I know. Dana told me. <laughs> ben, I do hope Frank Hall isn't going to give you too much trouble. No, no. It'll be all right. Well, we still have plenty of time before we have to catch a stage, so I think I'll go see how the horse is this morning. Don't be too long. I won't. Not well enough to give back to your brother. No, ma'am. Don't reckon he is. But you'll give him back, and he'll do it all over again, and this time there's nothing you can do to stop it. Look, I'm sorry. It's just that I knew a man like you once. As easy as that, man. Well, maybe you're right about me. But who did you know like Frank Cole? Did you know a man who raised his little brother when their parents died? When he wasn't much more than a kid himself? But how did he do it? By trying to break you like he did this horse? Yes, ma'am, he tried. Because he thought it was best. But he did other things, too. Like one winter in the mountains. We were tracking a wild herd. There was a blizzard and my horse fell on me. Broke my leg. Any other man would have left me to die. And I wouldn't have faulted him for it. But Frank stayed. He set my leg, gave me his food and the clothes off his back. He almost died himself. Did you know a man like that, Miss Dawson? I did. He's my brother. I have to go. It's your brother, and he's got the deputy. Yeah, I figured it might be. Well, don't go out there. You'll be arrested. You can still run. I thought you didn't like men who run away from trouble. Morning, Ben. Hoss. Good morning, Clem. I don't quite know how to start this, Ben. Why don't you just say it the way it is? I got a warrant sworn out by Frank here for the arrest of one Mark Cole, a charge of stealing a horse. Got another warrant. Claims you aided and abetted in stealing the horse, Ben. Now, is that right? That's exactly right, Clem. And at my trial, I'm gonna ask why a man like Frank Cole there uh, has the right to torture and destroy an animal just because it happens to belong to him. I claim no one, no one has that right. And if I have to go to jail to prove it, I'll be happy to do that, too. Where's the horse? Right here, deputy. That the animal? That's him. This ain't a regular case of horse stealing, Frank. You've got your property back. 
Now, I'll go through with these arrests if you want, but my advice for what it's worth is to not push it. It's up to you. Well, like you say, Clem, I do have my property back. I'll settle for that. Good. I think I'll ride back before somebody changes his mind. Get the horse. Frank? He's your property. Why don't you come get him? want him. You've got to go through me to get him. Is this the way you want it? No. It just has to be this way. I'll make it easy for you. Stop it, Mark. What are you trying to prove? You don't know now. You never will. No. Mark, I don't want to hit you anymore. I can't. You're gonna have to, Frank. You're gonna have to keep it down. Go on, finish it. Be gentle, boy. In time, but it wouldn't be right. So you go on now. Going back to your hills. Go on, fella. Sorry this happened. In a way. And in another way, I'm glad it did. And I think you will be too, when you've had a chance to think about it a bit. Heard a buffalo use you for a parade ground. Come on, let's get some medicine on you. Dana, we must leave now or we'll miss that stage. Father, couldn't we stay over until tomorrow? You're welcome to stay, Major. You know that. Well, uh, perhaps I could find an official reason for delaying our trip for well, one day. If you need an official reason just to stay over, I got me a bunch of geldings over in the East Range that you've got to see before you leave. Come on. As you're total, and I still say you outsmarted me. I don't know, Ben. Seems I paid too much for them. Major, you got yourself a wonderful bunch of horses. Isn't that right, Mark? Uh, they're mighty fine horses, sir. There you are, and that's the word of an expert. I'm no expert. Oh, Mark, I think you're entirely too modest. You know animals better than any man I ever saw. 
Mark, have you ever thought about a career in the Army? Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be too keen on soldiering, sir. Well, I was suggesting a career as an Army veterinarian. The Army has a great school in the Presidio in San Francisco. Incidentally, not far from Dana's in my quarters. Wouldn't you like that, Mark? Hey, Mark, this is what you always wanted, buddy. It sure is. Well, then it's all settled. He eat all the food. Oh, burn it. Oh, son of a gun. Well, at least now you know what happened to the other thumb. <laughs> Marcus Alley. Changing a bar of E brand into a box W. No, I have fallen out of here. Look, you can ask Arch Hollenbeck. He'll tell you who I am. Oh, I know who you are. You're a thieving cattle rustler. No, I ain't. Look. Just as I got in, somebody rode out fast. Honest. That's too bad. Now there ain't anybody here to back up your story. Hollenbeck is one of the men who hired you, Mr. Halley. You can ask him. He'll tell you who I am. Or Ben Cartwright. You ask him. I don't have to ask anybody anything. That running iron, this hog-tied steer tells me everything I have to know. You see, the Cattlemen's Association doesn't pay me to ask questions. The Cattlemen's Association pays me to stop wrestling. That's exactly what I'm going to do, my own way. Now you can go for your gun. I don't want to go for my gun. You don't understand, mister. You don't have a choice. like that's got to add up to Russell. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wells was one of my hands. He had every right to be here. With a running iron? Well, I admit that looks bad, but maybe there's some explanation. Oh, he had an explanation. He said he came across the fire, the running iron, and the steer by accident. I didn't want to kill him. He went for his gun. Mr. Hollenbeck, I know how you feel. You said you surprised him. Why didn't you just hold your gun on him and take his away from him? You should have brought him in, Ali. He would have talked to me, Ali. Gentlemen, I didn't have no choice. Unless you figure that I should have let him get off the first shot.
I'm saying is that I believe that the man that you hired as range detective and the man that I deputized is telling the truth. Now, if the Wells story is correct, there'd be another set of tracks coming into the fire and going out. And there wasn't any. It just shows you how wrong you can be. I'd have sworn Wells was an honest man. That seems to wrap it up, Roy. But much obliged. All right, man. See you later, boy. Well, Roy, Allie is waiting outside. Would you ask him to step in, please? I show up. Thank you. Why don't we have to see Allie again, Ben? He's not on trial, and we're no jury. Well, there's been some question about the way he's been doing the job, and since we're his employers, I think we should uh, we should tell him our investigation proves that uh, his report is completely accurate. Well, I'm going on record as being dead set against everything that he's done in this case. Oh, Mr. Alley, uh, would you uh, sit down, please? We, uh, we wanted you to know, Mr. Alley, uh, that the sheriff has corroborated the report that you made to us. Alley, the association is satisfied that you shot in self-defense. The association also wants to impress on you, Mr. Alley, that the next rustler you catch, you bring in alive. Well, I'll agree to that if the association can guarantee that the man won't draw on me. Nobody's expecting you to let yourself get shot. We just want to be sure that there's... You just no... want to be sure that there's no more surprises. And what's that supposed to mean? Like finding out who's really stealing your cattle? I think perhaps you'd better explain that remark. I'll be glad to. The men that are stealing your cattle are on your payroll. That's right. On your payroll, Mr. Cartwright, Mr. Hollenbeck. Mr. Johansson, Mr. Pauly, and he's spread with steers to steal. You see, it's a pattern. And it never changes whether you're in Arizona, Nevada, Texas. They're quiet, decent ranch hands during the day, and they're thieves at night. Well, just, just think about it now. Who else knows the country the herds, the back trails, even in the dark. But the very men that work them day in, day out. I tell you, there's nothing worse and more dirty than a man that'll steal from his employer. And I'm not going to lose a minute's sleep over some fool that gets killed trying to draw on me. questions. some nervy ones, but that alley's got them all beat. Man, I've got to get over to the bank before I leave town, gentlemen. Yeah, we are finished, aren't we, Ben? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Well, there is one more thing. Mrs. Wells. I think someone ought to go see her, see if there's anything we can do for her. He worked for you, Arch. Yeah, it's a thing I'll have to do. But I don't mind telling you, I sure don't look forward to it. Well, I, uh, I know her. Her father worked for me in the Ponderosa. If you like, I'll go along with you. I'd be obliged, Ben. I'd be much obliged. All right. Hollenbeck did come. 
Mr. Cartwright's with him. Ben Cartwright? to express our, uh, as well as Mr. Hollenbeck and I came by to see if there was anything we, we could do. Do? Thank you, no, gentlemen. I don't think there is anything to do under the circumstances. Mr. Cartwright, Prudence is going to come to live with me. Fine idea, Lamar. Very fine. We're deeply sorry, Mrs. Wells. You weren't sorry when you hired the range detective. Why be sorry now? Prudence, hush. I won't, Papa. That's the way I feel. Nobody's sorry except you and me. The cattlemen are getting what they want and hiring strangers to kill anyone they want. Mrs. Wells. Harlan was wrestling. There was a hot running iron in his hand. And that's good enough reason to hire a gunman from somewhere and murder him. Oh, Mrs. Wells. Mrs. Wells is... Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure you didn't know anything about it. But there was a pretty large organization. And they were wrestling hundreds of heads of cattle. Mr. Cartwright, I did not know about the organization, but I did about Harlan. He took that steer. I'm sure of it. And last October, when things were so bad for everyone, he took one then too and sold it. I don't know where, but he sold it. He was going to sell the one he took last week too. How much a steer now, Mr. Cartwright? Fourteen dollars? Sixteen dollars, Mr. Hollenbeck? Yes, he was wrong. I admit it. He should have been sent to jail. With shame, I admit it. But did you have to hire someone to shoot him from ten feet away? How do you pay your Marcus Alley, Mr. Cartwright? By the dollar value of the beef? Two steers, thirty dollars? How do you pay your Mr. Alley? In silver? time tonight. I'm gonna get all sheared and shaved and a new pair of pants and a clean shirt. And I'm gonna buy me a great big white Stetson I cost wear. It sounds like you've been saving up. You know, I never had it this fine before. I mean, hunting varmints for you guys and the cattlemen give me a bounty on every cougar pelt I bring in. And then they still leave me the first to sell. Joe. Full of that rich, I'll have nice drinks. Oh, so I think you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what I'll do. As soon as I deposit these over at Mr. Simpson, I'll come back and do that. <laughs> Good enough. Well, well, well. Josiah Heath. Mr. Alley. How long has it been? What a spell. Four years. Four years and better. You weren't carrying belts last time I saw you. But there was an animal around, if I remember. Desire Heath, and now you're trapping. I work for the Cartwrights. That's nice. I 
Nice as apple pie. You know, we got unfinished business. I expect I'll be seeing you. Come to think of it, I'm sure I'm going to be seeing you one last time. What was that all about? You heard him. I'm a dead man. Nellie caught us cold. Me and the two Tazwell boys that lived in that hard scrabble place right next to ours. Running irons, changing brands? No. No running irons. No fire. Hard times in Texas then. It was the early spring of the big blizzard winter of 64. We'd lost every head we owned. So did the Taswells. For three months, we lived on shadow soup and rabbit track stew. And we happened on this little stray belly deep in the bog. We got a rope around it and pulled the little critter out. The little thing could scarcely stand. It sure to have died if we hadn't happened along. But now, that don't change the truth. We were stealing beef that didn't belong to us. And Allie caught us. Did you tell him you pulled the steer out of the bog, that, that you were hungry? Yeah, we told him. But like I said, uh, the why of it didn't matter, at least not to him. Well, what'd he do? He told how he hated rustlers, scum. Oh, worse than scum, not fit to breathe the air or walk the face of the earth. And all this time he was holding a gun on you, right? Yeah, while he was talking. And then he put the pistol back in his holster, and he stood there grinning, daring us to draw. What, three of you, and he wanted you to draw on it? Well, three to one's pretty big odds, but not when gunfighting's your business, and the three are scared. But you got away. Benji Taswell drew on him first, and then hack. And Allie gunned him down. But he took a bullet in the leg and I got away. Well, that was in Texas and a long time ago. Yeah, four years. Three and a half I've been working for you all. I ain't ever been in any trouble since. That don't make too much difference to Mr. Allie. One thing he hates worse than a rustler is the one that got away. Here comes Allen now with Holland back and Allison. I don't think that man's ever gonna rest while I'm still alive. Junk out of it. Now, most people ask permission before they start fooling around with another man's horse. Why, you're bristling like a porcupine, Mr. Cartwright. You've been talking to your wrestler. Either tell us what you want or move on. There ain't a man alive who believe in an employee who'll steal from him. Makes him look too much like a fool. They fight it every time. I think my little brother's right. You better mount up and ride. What's going on? I'm just trying to do my job, Mr. Cartwright. Your boys are kind of getting in the way. Look, Pa, all I wanted Allie to do was tell me what he wanted. He wouldn't do it. Joseph! He was out hunting evidence. He asked us to come along as witnesses. Well, I've been looking for a horse wearing a crooked shoe with a half-moon piece out of it. You see, the first time I saw the track was up by the ashes of a restless fire, up on the high meadow near Twin Peaks. The second time I saw the track was today, right in this street. Mr. Cartwright, it's my horse. I figured that once I find the horse, I'm going to find the rustler. That's exactly what I did. I was up at Twin Peaks a couple of weeks ago. 
when I got that cougar, remember? Is he someone moved 10 or 12 steers across that high meadow, left one of them with a broken leg in rocks? The kind of thing happens when you're drifting cattle in the dark. The steer had a bar V mark on it. That's Mr. Allison's mark. Somebody taking a running iron to it. Changed it into a box W. Not me. Box W is Texas brand. It's easy to sell in Arizona. Ethan's farming for us. He got that cougar at Twin Peaks. I'm sure he said he did, but you see, hunting that uh, crooked shoe. That the only evidence you've got? That's right, Mr. Cartwright. But I'm going to find some more. You've got a rustler on your payroll. He got away with it in Texas, but he ain't going to get away with it here. Well, you've had four years without any trouble? Apparently, the Texas authorities think that you've squared the mistake you made, too. Yeah, well, Marcus Alley sure doesn't. No. Now, Tom. Mr. Cartwright, here's that lumber list. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Tom. Could you use another man on that uh, crew building that bunk yesterday? I sure could, Mr. Cartwright. From now on, join his crew, starting right now. Well, look, Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you, but no. What do you mean, no? Don't you know better than to argue with a fellow who's paying you wages? I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to keep me around close, out of Mr. Alley's way, but... a man just can't hide out and feel much like a man. Heath, I don't want you around any cattle, not even ours. All right. But it won't do any good. The way Mr. Alley feels about me, he'll find some excuse to come out here. Now, look, you said Alley doesn't kill unless he's alone. There's seven men on that bunkhouse crew. Stay close. Yes, sir. Marcus Alley's a killer. I say get rid of him. How? Pay him off. Send him down the road. Joseph, he was hired by the board of directors of the Cattlemen's Association. Well, Paul, you're the president of it. And chairman of the board. But I still have only one vote, and there are six others. Well, at least we can keep him off the Ponderosa. That's one thing. Well, there are five ranches bordering the Ponderosa, Joseph. Uh, Russell cattle could be driven anywhere across it, even hidden somewhere. Closing the Ponderosa to Alley, that could do a lot of harm to a lot of people. You're just not going to do anything about it? Is that what you're saying? Well, before I can try to change the board's mind about its decision, I have to be able to prove it was wrong. And at this moment, I don't know what it was. When in doubt, ask questions. Who's going to answer them? The cattlemen down in Texas who hired him to stop the rustling there. Urgently request you telegraph, collect immediately your opinion, Marcus Alley, and the work he did in your area. Method used and results obtained. Ben Cartwright, Bonderosa Ranch, Virginia City. 60 cents for each 10 words. That'll be a dollar 80. Well, it's going to be a little more. Paul wants the same telegram to send to every name on that list. Well, it's going to cost you. There must be 20 names here. 24. All them different towns, it'd take me a while to figure it out. We'll wait. Hey. Huh? Looks like we're late already. Now he got himself another rustler. Caught him in a water hole. Man tried to draw it. And Mr. Alley was alone and shot him in self-defense. Well, Alley was sure right about how blind we was as to what was going on. We thought about it for even a minute. We'd have known that this one was one of the gang. 
And who was it? Lamar Forbes, that's who. Prudence Wells' pa. How much is Ali getting for killing my pa? How much are you giving him? We didn't bargain in any killings. You hired Ali. You turned him loose to kill. That's on your head, Mr. Cartwright. Object at Ben Cartwright, bring in Haas to a closed meeting. We don't have closed meetings. Read the Constitution. Any member in good standing or guest of a member in good standing can attend any meeting as long as he doesn't create a disturbance. Uh, all right. I don't have to like it. Mr. Chairman, let's get on with the work. Do we fire Alley or do we keep him on the payroll? Show of hands, I say keep him. Time for that. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I believe discussion is in order. Every board member has a right to state his opinion. Well, gentlemen, I lost a cow since he come here. I say keep him and pay him a bonus to boot. And I say he's a killer and worse than a hydrophobic dog. I say fire him. Fast. Sure, that's because you had two rustlers on your payroll and you're afraid he'll find more. You say they're rustlers. Never been proved in a court of law. Gentlemen, Evidence, President. Gentlemen, please, both ah. of you, sit down. This is a discussion, not a shouting match. Four of us had a meeting of our own before this one started. We're for Ali. And talk ain't gonna change our minds. Now, you other three got anything to say, say it, and let's get this voting over with. I had my say. I vote to fire him. If I, uh, have some telegrams here, which I'd like to... Uh, we heard about him. Good way to stack the deck. Twenty replies to my inquiries. Fifteen of them say that Mr. Ali did a good job. He stopped the rustling. Ten of them didn't like the way he did it. In four years, Mr. Alley brought 28 men to trial. He also shot and killed ten men. There were no witnesses to any of the killings. In every instance, Mr. Alley was alone. He said the other man drew first. Now, gentlemen, the same thing is happening here. Mr. Alley was alone when Holland Wells was killed. Mr. Alley was alone when Lamar Forbes was killed. They drew first. Since it's my heart you're trying to nail to the barn door, I think I better say something. Every man that I brought to trial was found guilty, except one, and his uncle was one of the best lawyers in Texas. That's 27 out of 28 men. I guess that proves that I know my job. And as for there being no witnesses to the killings, I'm afraid that Mr. Cartwright is just plain wrong. He's got one working on his ranch. What is it that Heath said about when I caught him and the Tajwells? Were they guilty? Were they innocent? Gentlemen, I was quoting the messages I got by telegraph. 
And this one that Joe brought in is a further confirmation. Guilty or innocent? Heath told Hoss and Joe what happened. I was... I got it secondhand. Well, they, uh... They roped us a little steer out of a bog. They were, they were hungry. And... Was it their steer or was it someone else's steer? Well, it was somebody else's, but... They stole it. They were rustlers. We're talking about one mangy steer and three hungry men. One steer, a hundred steers. They were rustlers. I was the only man against three of them. Who drew first? The Taz was dead, but you sort of squeezed them into it. They drew first. I shot in self-defense. You shot to kill. Ten times in Texas, twice here. Twelve men. Twelve criminals, and they were trying to kill me. A man breaks the law, he's got to expect to pay for it. With his life? The law says one to fourteen years for stealing cattle. One to fourteen years. Now, that sounds pretty good. But if Wells or Forbes or any of the others had let me bring them in, why, people would be crying sorely tears over them before the sheriff could, could lock the cell. And the men that they stole from would be saying that they shouldn't get hit too hard for making one mistake. They only get a year in prison, and other rustlers come drifting in because, you see, a year isn't that much to risk. Those that are sent to prison, they'll come out and they do it all over again. It happens every time. But I'll say this, that the 12 men that drew against me, they stole their last cow. And all 12 were guilty, right? How can you be sure? I know, Mr. Cartwright. I always know. Show of hands, Ben. Let's take a vote. Four votes to keep him. Count them, Ben. And three against. All right, so be it. You're still employed, Mr. Alley. But I must ask you to make every effort to bring in alive any wrestler you may find. Bring him in alive to stand trial. Unless he tries to kill me first. Alley, now you have the confidence. You're the best. Goodness. You should have let me kill him. He's gone. Well, take it easy now. Take it easy. Gone where? When? He left for White Creek Breaks about an hour ago. Yeah. He went down the West Slope to Devil's Parlor. I tried to stop him, but he pulled a gun. What's true, Adam? Well, he's been trying to stay clear out of not wanting any trouble. But he figures the only way to save his life is to find those rustlers before Alley comes here for him. Well, he's one of our best trackers. If anybody can find anything up in that wild country, he can. He said he saw smoke over that way last week. Better round up House and Joe and get my horse saddle. Yes.
Time coming. Well worth waiting for. Got away from me in Texas. Finding you up here is the best thing that could have happened. You led me right into the middle of it, like I knew you would. Mr. Alley, I've never been in this camp before. I got here two, maybe three minutes before you did. You're all alike. Just can't stop stealing. Mr. Alley, I heard somebody ride off just before I rode in. You know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that lie, I could buy the Ponderosa. It's true, sir. It's a lie. Scum. Dirty the air you breathe, the ground you walk on. <laughs> I'd like you to make you play. No, sir, Mr. Alley. No, sir, I ain't gonna draw. You're gonna have to take me in. Four years I've waited for this minute. I would like you to make your play. You're gonna kill me anyhow, aren't you, Mr. Alley? Even if I don't draw. I'm not guilty. You're gonna kill me, aren't you? You're guilty, Heath. I ain't gonna draw. He didn't even try for his gun. You just shot him in the back. You murdered him. I caught a rustler. Tried to get away, I had to shoot him. Running irons in the fire, stolen beef. He found a camp and you followed him here. I killed a rustler. He said he heard someone right away when he came in, but it's the oldest lie there is. I think it's the truth. And I think you're gonna hang. Well, maybe you'd like to try me first. Go on, reach for it! Get the horses in the cover. All but one. 
Us? Yes, sir. Is there a blanket and lean to him? Heath is your boss rustler. You learned his trade in Texas, went into business up here. The rustling's over. The rest of them will scatter when they see me bring his body into town. Suppose Heath was telling the truth. Suppose uh, somebody did ride out when they heard him coming. And that same somebody is going to be riding back in. And then we'll have ourselves a real live prisoner. And maybe we can get to this, straight of this. Now, Joe, you just do everything the way we figured it out. Don't try to be a hero. Right. right now, turn over. a rustler, you ought to be glad he's dead. He was a human being, a man just like anybody else. Scum, just like all the rest of them, dirty, filthy murderers. You gotta stamp him out when you find him. Or they'll drive every decent man and woman clear out of the country. Burning, killing, stealing. It's a gospel truth. I know, I've seen it happen. They shot my pa, dragged my ma and my sis out of the house, burned the house to the ground. How old were you when this happened? I was 13, going on 14. If I had a gun, I'd have shot every one of them. But you see, that's the point. I didn't have a gun. They gotta be killed, Mr. Cartwright. You think about it like I've thought about it, you see I'm right. Hey, Paul. On the head and lock them up for a little while and let them loose to do it again. They gotta pay for what they've done. Come on. Come on, Harry. You drunken bum. You were supposed to have moved those steers two hours ago. You haven't even changed the brands yet. I pay you all this money, and what do you do? You drink yourself stupid. Don't move. Don't reach for it. What is this, Joe? You got no cause to hold a gun on me, Joe. Looks like we got the big one, Pop. You must be joking. He thought I was his foreman, Porter. Started chewing me out for not changing the brands on the cattle. I don't know anything about this camp. I... Come on, Mick. Don't try to lie. Sheriff Coffey will find Porter and he'll talk to save his hide. And he'll name all the others and they'll name you. End of the line, huh? You ought to be proud of yourself. A cattleman stealing from other cattlemen. Spare me the sermons, boy. You too, Cartwright. You don't even know what it's like to lie awake nights worrying about past due bills and loans. I enjoyed stealing your beef, Cartwright. Kind of made up for what was happening to me. You ain't even sorry. <laughs> One question. Josiah Heath. Was he one of your men? Cartwright, I'm not completely stupid. I knew that Heath was the one man I didn't even dare approach. He'd have told you before I was out of sight. Could have used Heath, too. If he'd been with me, he could have stolen you blind and you'd never have caught us. You ain't even sorry. 
As soon as they let you out, you'll do it all over again. The killing and the burning and the stealing. I ain't gonna let it happen. I'm unarmed and he was gonna murder me. Kill him! It's the only way to stamp him out. Kill him, don't you see? Kill him! Killing creates more problems. You've created enough of them. You're gonna trial for murder. Trouble can't even get himself into in San Francisco. I don't know. It's according to what kind of gals he's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. Peace, engine. Peace, pale face. Hey, Dave, come on in, buddy. <laughs> Found it, found it, a red skin wrangler. How many of our cages did you lose today? Davey, how you doing? Fine. How about some coffee? Thank you. I'll get you a cup. Evening, Miss Cartwright. Hello, Davey. Bill Corby said you wanted to see me. Yeah. Davey, I want you to pick out two of the best ponies you've been breaking for me and bring them in tomorrow. I need them for a, for a gift. Who are they for? I mean, uh, you want the best in the string? The very best. The best you've got. I want them for... Uh, for Chief Lone Spear. You know him. I remember him. The ranchers and Lone Spear are signing that treaty tomorrow, and. Uh... It's a waste of time. You can't trust him. Davy, the sacred ground is being returned to the Ute tribe. Everybody's guaranteed not to trespass on it. It means a great deal to them. Doesn't mean a thing to me. Haas, maybe you better come by my place tomorrow and uh, pick out them horses yourself. the white man will be signed tomorrow. The sacred ground will be our sacred ground once more. I, Lone Spear, chief of the Utes, will make my mark. The white man will take the water from our land. He will take only a small part of it. And in trade, he will give us back the land of our ancestors. I do not trust them. The white man trusts the Ute. He has promised never again to set foot on the sacred ground. And if the white man breaks his word, we must kill. <laughs> Two good ponies? Well, I think so, Paul. Ask old Dave what he thinks. Best in the string. Well, good. I sure hope Lone Spear will be pleased. I don't want any hitch in the signing of this treaty. That sacred ground means a lot to the Utes, and the water rights sure mean a lot to the settlers in the valley. So the settlers can use that water without a treaty? Well, not without a fight. It's a pretty short fight. Utes wouldn't last long. You can say you want about the Utes, they're still your people. My people, are they? <laughs> Mr. Cartwright hadn't have found me. Where my people left me, I would have been killed that day. I was only five years old, but I remember it. I always will. My people. 
You're my people. Only ones I've got. Except for Haas here, a guy couldn't ask for better. Well, we, uh, we better get going. Yeah? Mr. Cartwright, do you mind if I come along? Sure. Sure. Good idea. Dave, you and me ain't been down together in months. Besides, you did such a bad job on them broths that might need some help. I swear, Haas, about the only thing you don't need help on is eating. Oh, you don't remember the time you cooked out there on that hunting trip, right? Don't worry, he'll be here. I can't say that I enjoy being kept waiting by an Indian. Now, he said he'd be here at noon. Jack Nelson must be known. Here he comes. Spear. Ben Cartwright. Welcome, my friend. We are here to speak as men. And my voice shall come from the heart and from my people. We shall see them if we are friends. Uh, this is Judge Nelson. He will witness the formal signing of the treaty. Of course, you know all the ranch is present. The treaty with Chief Lone Spear and his people will be a thing of trust and honor. I want Lone Spear to know that I consider it great privilege to be here on this solemn occasion. Let us enter the lodge and speak. <laughs> Right, Moon. You wait for me here. Impressive old gentleman, ain't he? Yeah, he sure is. How about some cold drink? I can use it. Sounds good. Dave, you want some drink? Yeah, sure, why not? It's gonna take these savages quite a while to power up. Grace, that's what it is. Meeting with them, bargaining with them. The only way you can bargain with an engine is from behind a rifle. What do you have, David? You have beer, I'll have sarsaparilla. Well, sarsaparilla's good for me. Fine. Bartender, three sarsaparillas. Oh, uh, bartender, you uh, serve engines in a white man's saloon? He's Cartwright's. Uh, they don't care who they bring into a white man's saloon. You know, I bet you they'd even bring in hogs if they had any hogs. Wouldn't smell much worse if it did. Anything I can't stand is the smell of a stinking engine. Refill, Frank. Saving you the trouble, Frank. Wouldn't want a white man drinking out of that glass. Not after the likes of him. What seems to be you two fellers' big problem, anyhow? Let me straighten you two fellers out on something. There's just an outside chance that we two might be even more uncivilized than our Indian friend. 
Have you got anything to say to us? Nothing. Good. Bartender, there's another sarsaparilla. Let him go. Give him a chance to cool off. I said savages. I'm sorry. Your eyes. They show great hurt. It is I who am sorry for you. There's no need. I have a job, a life. I live like a white man. There's much food to eat, and I have a house to live in. What's wrong with this engine? What? He thinks he's a white man. Well, maybe we ought to teach him some white man manners. I will say goodbye now. How about saying goodbye to us, engine? Real nice. We're waiting, engine. Like I said, Judd, maybe we should teach him some manners. Now, how about you, honey? Are you going to be nice? Look, leave her be. Out of your engine. Get away from her. Now, wait a minute, honey. You just stay here. Take it easy, honey. Get me that Indian. I'll see him dead if I have to follow him from now on. You all right, David? Yes, thank you. Who is this white man? What is he doing? Just hold on, I know how it looks. I do not me. speak to you, but to her. Who is he? This man tried to protect me, and you were wrong. He is not a white man. He is an Indian like us. Like us? Look at him. You call him Indian? He is neither Indian nor white. He is the hunting ground without buffalo. He is the land after the fire, when even the roots are burned. Indian? He is not even a white man. <laughs> Stop. Joseph, horse, what's the meaning of this? Well, Paul, I can speak for myself. And I speak to you, Lone Spear. Who is this man? He is not a man. He is a half-breed. I am not a half-breed. I'm an Indian. You hear me? An Indian. A youth like you. Well, you're all ready to go, Paul. Good. A little 
Well, brother, you behave yourself here. As long as you're going to the state capitol, don't mean you can kick them heels up too high, you know. Oh, don't worry, Hoss, I won't. Hoss, I'd like you to do me a favor. Yeah, Bo. But, uh, I've told Lone Spear that the treaty's in effect as of right now. Except, of course, I've got to get the paper signed by the governor, and I'm not sure that Lone Spear quite believes it, so I'd like you to ride over there today and again tomorrow and sort of quiet any doubts that Lone Spear might have. Don't worry about a thing, Paul. I'll keep everything calm and quiet. All right. been waiting for you. You were the last of the women to come. If I had known you were here, I would have been the first. I had so many things I wanted to tell you, now I've forgotten them all. You need not say anything. Yes, I must. I came here just to see you, and now... You said... You are an Indian, a Ute. Is this true? Yes, it is. But you live as a white man. I would like to tell you why. And I will someday. You need not tell me at all. Yes, let me. <laughs> thing my pa said was that that sacred ground was yours and no white man was to set foot on it from this day forward. The sacred ground is dear to my people. And the water is dear to the ranchers. And I trust that you will guarantee them that water. Horse Cartwright speaks well from the heart. But he speaks of guarantees. What guarantee is there that as more white men come, they will not take back the land of the sacred ground. I know that in the past, the white man has smoked the pipe many times in sealing treaties, and he's often broken them. But this treaty is going to be signed by the governor of the state, and the ranchers have already signed it. And we Cartwrights will stand behind every word of it, and you can depend on that. The word of a Cartwright is one that I trust. Give me the pipe. Lone Spear. Do as I say. There are a few of your race with whom I would smoke. Wait. A brave does not carry water. And my people should not see it. Well, I am your people. But you have been too long away. Our customs are not as the white man's. And my heart fears for you. White Wolf will... He doesn't worry me. But it has long been understood that White Wolf and I would plant side by side two reeds and live in one teepee. This is Bright Moon's wish? It is Bright Moon's fear. happen.
the meaning of this? This white man's dog would take the woman promised to me. Is this true, my daughter? It is true. While one white man smokes the pipe, another brings dishonor to my daughter. I am not a white man. My skin is the color of yours. You have lived as a white man. You are a I am what man. I am because Lone Spear is a coward. Baking dog! Before you die, or I do, I allow you to explain. Davy, you apologize to the chief right now. Lone Spear spoke of honor. I say his mouth fouls the word. Is it honor to leave a child on the field of battle? To leave him to the white man's revenge? Would Lone Spear call this honor? He would not. And he is listening. Then listen well. For it was you who did this. You ran before the white man's guns at the Battle of Red Fork. Leaving behind my mother and father dead. And a child. Me. To whatever mercy the white man chose to show me. Had not Ben Cartwright found me. No, I did not choose to be what I am. You made me what I am, and now you turn from me. Your knife. I will speak. And if my words do not satisfy, I ask you to take my life. The Battle of Red Fork was one where we fought with honor. When the sun rose, there were over 200 of my people ready to die for what they believed. When the sun set, there were only a few, like scattered grains of corn to greet the night. No longer an army, disorganized, scattered, defeated. You were left behind. I can only say this. I would have given my life to take you with us. If I had known you were there. If you do not believe this, do now what you must do. It is I who should offer my life to you instead of... Instead of what? Of asking that I be reunited with my people. And then I might speak with your daughter, Bright Moon, of marriage. Before that day comes, you will lie with your ancestors! Silence, White Wolf. It is not your place to speak. Perhaps it is not even mine. But as chief, I do. If it is your wish... You may become one of us. As for Bright Moon, there must be time. But in the end, she alone will decide. Come. Spear. Return to my tribe to begin a new life. I have spoken. Lone Spear has heard. wanted you to remember this night. The night I became an Indian again. 
Yeah, I, uh, I ain't likely to forget it. I came to say goodbye, Haas. What does that mean? Well, I'm quitting my job. All the stock is fed and watered. Uh, it'll be all right till you find another man to take my place. Tell Joe and Mr. Cartwright goodbye for me. You're, uh, you're really serious about all this, ain't you? Yes, I am. I reckon you got your eye on that little gal, huh? <laughs> She's gonna be my wife. She's pretty. Real pretty. Yes, yeah, she is. Hope everything works out for you. It will. It will. Dave. Peace. <laughs> about this promise to marry ceremony. All I remember is what I saw when I was a very small boy. You saw? A small boy is not supposed to see. Well, it was dark. I didn't see very much. <laughs> For shame. It don't matter what they're doing. They get a better shot at that engine. Hold it. you with all my strength in all the years to come. And I will serve you well in all the years to come. fighting or begging for your life. I do not want to fight you. Have you lived so long with the white man that you have forgotten our customs? It is wrong to kill. It is wrong to take the woman meant to be another man's wife. You will fight for her. If I must. <laughs> We can become friends. You have won. Bright Moon is yours. 
Go. See that Davy talk himself out of this. According to our laws and customs, it was your right to kill White Wolf. I could not kill him. Alive, he will someday be a friend. You speak with wisdom. Lone Spear, I fought for Bright Moon. Our custom gives you the right to her. Does she feel as you do? I could not be more happy, my father. are happy too, but our sacred drown belongs again to the Utes. So that your life together may begin there, as it rightfully should. Go now. And say they saw Davy kill an engine by the name of White Wolf. Threw a knife on his back and run off. I don't believe that. They brought in the body with a knife still sticking and had no other wound. He was probably fighting over that young squaw. Hoss, I gotta ask Davy some questions. Where is he? He's gone over to live with the Utes. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just have to ride in there and get him. Hold up a minute, Sheriff. Let me get my horse on the ride with you. So you see, Chief, the sheriff here wants to take Davy into Virginia City. The man you know as Davy is a youth of this tribe. Yes, sir, I, I know. But you see, we're up against the law now, Chief. And he just wants to take him in for questioning, that's all. He did not kill White Wolf. Did you see the fight? No, but my daughter, Bright Moon, was there and told me how it was. Well, two witnesses here say they saw Davy throw a knife in White Wolf's back. Do you say she lies? I don't say anybody lies. Not yet. What I am saying is I'm going to take that boy in for trial. He is a youth. You cannot have him. Don't be telling me what I can do and what I can't. You're talking to the law. Now, now wait a minute. There's got to be some way to straighten this thing out. The boy and bright moon are beyond your reach. They are on sacred ground, youth ground, forbidden to all white men. That's right. The governor's already signed that treaty by now, and if you go in there, you're going to be starting trouble, and I mean shooting trouble. It is sacred ground. Oh, the crime's been committed. Now, sacred ground or no sacred ground, 
I gotta have the boy. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sheriff, what would happen if I went in there alone and got him? I mean, that is if the chief would permit me. I'll just go to the boundary. You'll bring him in? Yeah, I'll bring him in. If you promise, stay right here and wait for me. Well, all right. Make it quick. talk to you. What do you want? White Wolf is dead and they think you killed him. Come, enter. We will talk. That law work pays pretty good, don't it? Not too bad. Uh, you seem like a nice fellow. Be a pity to see you lose that badge. What makes you think I'm going to lose it? One thing you always hear about them Cartwrights is that they're mighty good to their friends. Yeah. Now, Davy's been on their payroll a long time. I ain't saying Horse would break the law, but on the other hand, he ain't above helping an old friend get away. Even if that friend happens to be a knife-throwing, backstabbing murderer. Now, you let them two Utes get a head start on you, and you ain't ever going to get near enough to spot their dust. Come on. Deputy told the chief that they found an Indian knife in White Wolf's back and that, that he had to bring in. But White Wolf was alive when we left him. This deputy sheriff's got a couple of witnesses that claim they saw you throw the knife. It was that Judd and Skinner. Those two. Lies. Every word lies. Hell. Well, look, Davey, all you got to do is ride in with me and tell Judge Nelson how it happened, and then it'll all be over and done with. No, Hoss, it won't. The word of two Indians will not stand up against the word of two white men. They'll hang me. I'm sorry, back. horse. I gotta have that boy. This is your ground. It's sacred ground. Don't you understand that? Us? I'm gonna do my duty. I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna start a war. That's what you're gonna do. All right, so I start a war. <laughs> made enough foolish mistakes, Sheriff. Put that gun away. One false move and we're all dead men. Sacred ground. I'm just trying to do my duty, Chief. Trying to bring a murderer into trial. Who do you call a murderer? Davy there. And you would have a trial. In Virginia City. On Ute ground, we have Ute trial. Here and now. Did you throw a knife into White Wolf's back? No, I did not. My daughter, 
Were you with him when he fought White Wolf? Yes, my father, I was. And what he has just said, is this true? It is true. These two say they saw the knife thrown. That's right. I say you both lie. No, sir, it's the truth. You bet your life. We will see. And we'll have trial. Which of you fights for the white man to prove the boy lies? Wait a minute, Chief. The knife fight isn't going to prove anything. Besides, you're only starting another murder. In your courts, some men put their hands on the book and lie. In a youth trial, some men feel the knife's kiss of death at the throat and still lie. Some men, but very few. Of you fights. I choose you. Oh, stop this. You can stop it. Our land, horse Cartwright. Your father signed the treaty giving it back to us. Ute land, Ute law. Unless the word of your father is worthless. You learn, you law. You fight. Kill White Wolf. No, it wasn't me. Then who? Judd hates every red skin he ever saw. Hates you more than any. When he saw a chance to put a knife in White Wolf. The 
Shut him up, Davy. We all know the truth now. Come on, you two. We got some talking to do back in town. Now, Dave. Just because you've gone back to your people don't mean you can't come back to the Ponderosa for a visit. You come see us, you hear? I will. And bring your wife. Thank you.